everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeson from Beauty and the Beast. I'm gonna upload every single Sunday and Wednesday. Today's video is focusing on meals and just how I make meals easier for us as a family of six. There's so many times that we just quickly go to Chipotle or order sushi. One of my New Year's resolutions was to cook more meals at home. I do enjoy cooking, but when your kids are in sports and dance and things like that, it just happens that you tend to order out more if you don't have a plan. So basically I'm gonna be showing you what has been working for us and we're also gonna be creating meal baskets. I've done this so many times before and just completely fell off with it but when I do meal baskets, it's so much more helpful. So we're gonna be going over that. Also gonna show you not just how I meal plan, I'm gonna show you like how I put ideas together what staples I keep in the house because I have four kids. We have a few meals that all four of them will eat, which I know, it's crazy. It's like unheard of, but there's a couple meals that all four of them will actually eat. So those are always like, I couldn't think of the word I was looking for. There are staples. I was gonna say there are bread and butter, there are staples. They're the things that we can always just have in case they're hating what Chris and I are having for dinner. I do also have a free printable on my website, tiffanybeeston.com. Um, for meal planning like it's really simple it just goes through the week and then on the side it has a grocery list that you can make yourself so first let's go print that out I'm also going to put some cooking and recipes at the end of this video okay so this is really easy to do all you have to do is go to tiffanybeeston.com and on your right hand side you'll see three little lines you're gonna click that and then you'll see where it says free printables pick out whatever printable you are wanting to print and it's that easy. I also talk about if you don't have a printer, I think you can send it to Staples or whatever works for you, but I'm actually going to sit down with you after I'm done to, uh, writing here, and we're gonna have like a 20 minute long face-to-face -face conversation about everything that I do to meal plan, what helps me, some of our staple recipes, and we go off topic a couple of times too. I definitely talked way too much in this video, but sometimes just doing like a vlog style and just talking directly to the camera like really feels like I'm connecting with you more so while I love voiceover I also love videos like that as well So basically after I was done picking out my meals and I'll go over again when I'm talking face to face how I chose them, I'm going over to my right hand side here and making a list of the things that I need. I also do my grocery list on Alexa so I will just like ask her what's on my grocery list and add that and make sure we have all of that stuff as well. That is definitely my most used Alexa feature is the grocery list because not only do I add things, the kids add things, which sometimes there's ridiculous things on that list, but it can definitely be helpful to keep your whole house on track. And then there's like an Alexa app on your phone so you can check it from your phone if you're not home as well. Okay, so now that we have our meal plan written down, you saw I wrote like which days we have stuff going on. I feel like that's always helpful. It's just like on the side. It's not your planner, but it's just to remind you like, all right, we need an easy, quick meal this night, whatever. So I have that written down. Chili and cornbread is something that three out of four kids love. So I'll make the fourth kid something else. It's just, it's fine. Especially because this is something that you can just throw in the crock pot. Um, so, you know, I've made chili a million times here on my channel. It's something that we love. So. Chili and cornbread, staple crock pot meal. Monday, we have soccer, just easier. Tuesday, we're home. So we are having peanut chicken. It's a recipe that I found on Pinterest. Just, I love peanut sauce. So I, I'll just like type in like peanut chicken recipes. If you're having some type of craving, that's another great way to, you know, find a recipe for that week. If you're looking to venture out and try something new, type it into Pinterest, see what looks good to you. Um, let me see what else is in that just so I can explain it a little bit better. Also, when I send out, um, week of January 15th, um, when I send out my weekly newsletter, all you have to do is go to tiffanybeeston.com, scroll to the bottom, enter your email. When I send out my weekly newsletter, I always put like what my plans for dinner are for that week along with like a link to Pinterest where I have all the recipes saved for that. 
Um, so right now I'm just quickly creating this board for um, the week of 115. So this recipe calls for creamy peanut butter, sesame oil, which we will omit, unfortunately, such a delicious flavor. I love sesame flavoring, um, but my husband's allergic, so we can't have that. Uh, freshly squeezed lime juice, garlic, fresh ginger, I have all that stuff already. Soy sauce we have, honey we have, red pepper flakes, water. So honestly, the only thing we need to get would be the chicken for this. Um, three cups of chopped broccoli florets, two large red bell peppers, green onions, which I always have there, garlic. Yeah, so again, just a very easy, easy recipe. So basically, you use those ingredients to make a peanut sauce and kind of like stir fry it all together. So although it sounds like a new thing that may be harder to cook, it's actually something that will take no time at all. I have noticed that lately I don't really meal prep per se, I ingredient prep. So something like that chicken, if you have time, even if it's like right before bed or if you're a stay at home mom or work from home mom, like during a break or I do a lot of stuff when Everly is napping, it's like my little personal timer that I try to get as much as I can done unless it's one of those days where I just have an afternoon coffee and play Candy Crush, favorite pastimes. Um, so something like that it's easy but to make it even easier go ahead and cut that garlic and ginger and all that stuff up ahead of time I know for me personally our morning and like evening routines are the most stressful because you're on a time crunch you're answering 5,000 questions you're helping with homework you're cleaning you're you know putting out whatever fire is around you while trying to cook dinner so I just feel like if everything is prepped in advance it's just it's much easier and less stressful. Then Wednesday is soccer and karate. So this is a trial class for Tanner. I just really felt like he needed his own thing because the baby, I call her a baby, she's not a baby, she's three. Um, she will take Ella's dance class with her. The teacher lets her, she actually does a really good job, but she's too young to be in the recital. So basically Ella and Everly have dance. Carter has soccer. And I feel like Tanner needs his own thing. He has spring sports, but he needs something for the winter. So he agreed to test out karate. So we are going for a trial class and I really hope that he likes it. He's gonna try it with a friend. And again, like not that you need to have your kids in all kinds of activities all the time. I know a lot of people are like, we need the slow life. But I just feel like as a sports girl growing up, sports and dance girl growing up, I feel like they need it. And if they're loving it, which so far everybody loves what they're doing, we'll see how Tanner feels, then you know, it can't hurt. So. I just want him to have his own thing and not have to be like drug around to like Ella's dance recital, Carter's soccer games, and not have like his own thing. I don't know. That's just my own personal thought. So I really hope that he loves it. So that night is is busy. Um, so we're gonna do a crock pot roast. So I have. I'm not sure. I might. I might switch it up because when I made the roast, I have a short on here if you want to see it um, in the in the Dutch oven. It was so delicious and like fell apart um, and that happens like five out of ten times for me when I do it in the crock pot so maybe I'll just do it in the Dutch oven it takes three hours to cook so like you can put it in right before you know that it's dinner time and have that ready so it's still an easy thing again you can prep those sides like we I like mashed potatoes with my roast um, something you can prep in advance or even just like cut up the potatoes peel the potatoes that type of thing Thursday, we are having chicken cacciatore and salad. My kids love my version of chicken marsala. It was in my last evening routine. I, I went through the whole recipe with you, made the whole meal with you. So if you want that recipe, go back and watch my last video. But chicken cacciatore is something that my husband grew up loving. So I make my own version of that now. And we just haven't had it in so long. And I mentioned it this week. I'm like, oh, it's because we had capers on our date night. It was on our salmon. And I was like, oh my gosh, remember when we used to make uh, chicken cacciatore all the time. He's like, yeah, like, we should have that again. So we're we'll having that this week. And salad is just an easy staple. I do try to buy romaine lettuce and like pre-chop it, but sometimes the bag of salad is where it's at. And then Friday is our DIY pizza night, although we haven't done it because we use our pizza oven that's outside and it's just been freezing. Um, and it's fun, but it can be messy. I think this week, this week coming up on Friday, I'm going to try to pre-prep the dough. I make two ingredient dough 
with flour and Greek yogurt. Basically, it's three ingredients because you also use um, baking powder. Um, but it's so good. It's high protein from the yogurt, and the kids love it. I love it. Chris loves it. So we also make bagels like that. Anyway, I talk too much. I think I'm going to pre-make the dough and just like have it separated, and the kids can still roll it out and make their own pizza. Friday nights are dance night, but we're usually home by 5.45, so we still have time. It's not like a huge rush because there's no school the next day. So doing that. So then along the side here, you see I have the shopping list. So I break it up into protein, produce, dairy, miscellaneous, frozen. If you have like a ton of stuff, you can always break it up by aisle based on your grocery store. Um, a lot of people are using Instacart now, so I feel like this is a good idea for that because you're just like going through and checking off what you need. A lot of stuff, this is what's good about cleaning out your pantry. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to just get, keep plugging my old videos, but I did recently do a fridge and pantry clean out. When you clean out your pantry and you know what you have, one, you save money, and two, you're just more organized and you're more likely to cook at home. Because when I look in the pantry, I just feel like, oh, okay, like we have this, how about we make this? For example, we always have a box of corn bread mix. We always have red kidney beans and um, crushed tomatoes and diced tomatoes to make chili. We always have onion and garlic in there, so I don't need that for my recipes. I usually always have ginger in the fridge, so we don't need that for our recipes. So truly, there's like not a ton of stuff that's needed from the grocery store. Another little thing that I like to do, because we all know, plan is just a plan. It can go. There's been weeks that I've meal planned and didn't make a single thing on that list because of just life happening. So what I like to do on those days is obviously, when we're having meals, we're trying to balance it with the protein, a vegetable, and a side, whether that's like, call it a carb, like rice or mashed potatoes, whatever kind of side you're having, pasta. My kids love just butter noodles with their stuff a lot of times. We recently found this delicious um, gluten-free fresh pasta. My kids are not gluten-free, but they really like this pasta that we found at Aldi, and it was affordable. It had a really long um, shelf life in the fridge, so I liked that. So that's another side that they were enjoying. I noticed that when I'm meal planning for the week and I'm like buying all this fresh produce, vegetables, especially fruit, doesn't really go bad in my house because my kids are fruit maniacs and I have four of them. I like to use fruit in my smoothies, um, even though I usually use like mostly frozen and then just a fresh banana and fresh spinach. That's no biggie, but I saw that I was throwing away a lot of vegetables. And I'm like, this is like, first of all, it, I felt like this point in myself, like I should have made these vegetables. Like, what was I thinking? My kids don't have enough vegetables. That type of thing that us moms do. So getting frozen organic, you saw on my list it says frozen organic vegetables. This is how I pick the vegetables for the week. I always get frozen broccoli. If they don't have organic, I get regular, whatever. Um, but if they are something frozen organic, that's how I pick what veggies I get for that week. And the kids don't care. They hate vegetables regardless. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> frozen or fresh. But, you know, they still will try the vegetables. Everly, she's three, she still loves her veggies, thank God. My kids always love a salad mix, that's why I always have a salad. So basically, frozen vegetables, salad mix in the fridge, there's your vegetables for the week, right? So you have that figured out for your meals. Protein, I'm always having, um, we always have some type of chicken or ground turkey in the fridge. We don't just have like steak chilling in the fridge, we usually like buy that and cook it pretty quickly. Um, but chicken, you know, so versatile, you can do so much with it. And then in the cabinet, I always have quinoa and rice and pasta. So there it is. If there's, you have a protein, a vegetable, a side, right? You're good. And then that's when you get into the fun part, like sauces. In the crock pot, you can make any chicken you want to have for dinner that night, put it in the crock pot with whatever sauce. Um, you can put some regular tomato sauce. We've had like chicken pasta before. Delicious, easy, simple. Um, also, it helps with the pasta that I use is jovial brown rice, so I feel like it's healthier, you know, like, I don't know. At least that's what I tell myself. I'm sure if I even wanted to do the um, peanut chicken in the crock pot, I could. So you have a sauce. Another sauce that I really like is just plain old coconut aminos. I love it, I love it on everything. Salsa, we always have salsa because you can either top it on chicken or make the salsa taco chicken in the crock pot. Super simple, easy, tacos are a staple, something that all my kids will have. So basically what I'm saying is you have to figure out your staples 
and have them on backup and that's gonna make you able to eat at home even to go as far as frozen meat because there's times when I'm like the meat expired like the chicken expired whatever we always have frozen turkey burgers and we always have frozen meatballs because the kids love meatballs so that gets me into having your kids staples I get questions all the time I'm like how do you get your kids to eat these meals it could be a Monday and they could love the meal. I can make it on a Tuesday and they could think it's the worst thing ever. You just really honestly never know. But we do have a set list of meals that they will all eat. So let me go grab my list so we can go through that. And if you have something like that for your family, just make a list. Make it more mindless for yourself. But for us, we have spaghetti and meatballs. So we always have sauce. We always have frozen meatballs. We always have pasta. So if there's something that Chris and I are making that the kids won't like, whatever spaghetti meatballs garlic bread and salad one of their favorite meals ever um tacos i already said we always have a taco kit spices another one of their favorites is tomato basil soup and grilled cheese so they like to dip their grilled cheese I actually had that last night in their tomato soup and i just buy i think the brand is pacific tomato soup however i did just purchase an immersion blender like the little thingy you put in your soup here, oh my gosh, I swear, I cannot talk today. I don't know if it's because I'm like PMSing or what, but like I, my brain cells are just, anyway. I bought an immersion blender um, so that I could try to make homemade tomato soup. I keep seeing reels and it looks just really easy and delicious. You basically cut up all your fresh produce, roast it, and then use the immersion blender and have a soup. So. I'm hopeful, I really wanna try it. I can't believe I don't own one already. Then chicken ramen soup, which I've made in videos before. It's basically chicken noodle soup, but we use ramen in it. And our secret ingredient is we use one box of kettle and fire beef bone broth in our chicken noodle soup with regular chicken broth and all that. It adds nutrients, adds protein, and just gives it like a better flavor somehow. And then last but not least, wings. My kids love wings. I can't buy like frozen wings. I can, I guess I can get fresh wings and freeze them, but they love wings. So does my husband, but literally like you look at their plates and there's just like little bones. Like they don't mess around. They eat all their chicken wings and love it, which is funny because Tanner like me, where he just can't sit there and eat a chicken breast. It has to be like cut up and stir fried or shredded in the crock pot or it topped with lots of toppings. Like just a plain piece of grilled chicken. It just doesn't do it for me and Tanner is the same way. So anyway, that's how I meal plan. Now to simplify this a step further, make it even easier, we are going to do our meal baskets. I'm telling you, you gotta go to Dollar Tree. I just made a reel on it on Instagram. Their organizational items right now are amazing. They even have like this new acrylic one that's so cute, but of course I got the pink baskets. I, like I said, I've done this in the past and it's just it's just nice it just it's mindless just there's days like especially for me in my cycle and i can talk like this because it's women watching my channel for me in my cycle it's like there's certain times where i am like sharp and on point and can do everything and basically prioritize what needs to be done each day this week right now it's hard for me to even like talk in this video the week before my cycle starts I'm just like, what? <laughs> That's genuinely how I feel. Like I feel like I can't concentrate, I can't focus, and it's hard to even talk. But I hope that I'm coming through clear for you on here. If you don't know much about your cycle, you really should track it. Can, every iPhone has a cycle tracker in their in the phone. You can just track your cycles and look, see what phase you're in on Pinterest. If you type in like like me, I have a normal 28 day cycle. I know what phases I'm in during each part of the cycle. This is a meal planning video, but we're getting into cycles. But this is why I like it, because I feel like it's insightful and it's like, oh, I'm not just feeling crazy. It's that part of my cycle. So day one of your cycle, and I'm just doing this, like making it as simple as possible. And you may already know this, but day one of your cycle is the first day of your period. So days one through five, movement should be low intensity you should eat more fruits seeds and fish follicular phase for follicular phase is days 6 through 14 
light cardio would be your exercise and eating fiber and lean meats. Ovulatory days, these are the days that I feel the best and of course it's like the three days, two days. Um, but days 15 through 17 is when you can do high intensity workouts and eat cruciferous veggies. The luteal phase is days 18 through 28 which is when i'm in now lightweight training starchy vegetables and nuts what's hilarious is that on pinterest it says luteal phase symptoms everything you need to know and the image is what i feel like exactly right now look at this it's just it's just something to make you feel better because i know like it's not anything i'm doing i'm not lazy it's just this part of my cycle where i just want to chill and not complete sentences and not use my brain. I wanna lay on the couch playing Candy Crush. Luteal phase symptoms are bloating, sore breasts, headaches, cravings, mood swings, irritability, and fatigue. My current craving is this latte that I'm obsessed with that I literally can't stop thinking about it all the time. And it's not the healthiest, but it's also not the unhealthiest. It is, um, it's a toasted white chocolate oat milk latte from Dunkin Donuts. I only get one pump of um, the toasted white syrup to be a little bit healthier and plus it's plenty sweet enough for me. If for someone who likes super sweet, you can get more, but I just love it. It's like cozy deliciousness in a cup. Anyway, that's my craving right now. Let's stop talking about cycles. <laughs> I just feel like it, it, all, it all makes sense. So if you're like me and feeling like this, you're not lazy, you're not dumb, since you can't complete a thought, it's just your dang luteal phase. All right, moving on. Chris actually like ran out and got some stuff that I needed just for over the weekend. I don't like to do a huge grocery shop because we have a busy weekend this weekend. We're not going to be home that much. So he just texted me, your, Insta your Instacart shopper has started shopping. He will contact you with any replacement or out of stock items. Have a peachy day. He's so funny. Um, so once he gets home, I'm just going to do a quick little grocery haul and show you what I got and then we'll create our meal basket. You know that latte I was dreaming about? Chris, you're the best. All right, let's do our haul. Thank you, Instacart shopper. I'm gonna leave you a huge tip. Okay, so <laughs> we got our eggs. He said, I'm like, is there a storm coming or something? He said there was like barely any eggs left, um, which is just kind of weird, right? These are Tanner's favorite thing. Like when he comes home from school and sees these, he's going to make his entire life, so. This is for our cacciatore. I told you I love coconut liquid aminos are just absolutely the best. Sun-dried tomatoes for our cacciatore as well. My kids are obsessed with bread and butter pickles. And let's see. What I like about these is that there's no artificial food coloring. Um, if you look in a lot of the pickles, there is they add the color yellow to them and that's known to cause like a lot of issues in kids like like make some hyper and like all other kinds of things you can look it up um enchilada sauce my favorite which they didn't have here is the siete brand it's in a glass jar their enchilada sauce is the best half and half milk coffee good old jiff this is chris's favorite these tortillas, I, again, I wish that they had the Siete brand, but they didn't. But these are gluten-free because they're made out of corn. But if you can find the Siete brand cassava flour or even their like almond flour wraps are really good. Our chicken and our steak strips is turkey bacon. Again, I didn't get like all of my meat because I don't want to go bad for the rest of the week. When I'm filming this, it's Friday, so we still have the weekend mixed vegetables he called me and was like there's no organic frozen vegetables that is why i will say that i do like to order from whole foods through amazon because they have like a lot of really good healthy options but evie loves this mixture and i'll usually make it for her with her mac and cheese for lunch these are for our peanut chicken way easier you don't even have to chop them they're frozen and then just some broccoli and we also got fresh peppers so the kids like to eat these raw in their lunch berries they're so expensive. That's the most expensive part of parenting, right? Is buying the berries. <laughs> I saw a meme like that the other day. Tanner and Ella are on a kiwi kick. Blackberries. This is our favorite breakfast sausage. Speaking of like breakfast meats, 
this turkey bacon that I showed you. It's like my current obsession. I love it. No nitrates, not preserved, whatever. But what I like is that it has a ton of protein. So per one slice is six grams of protein. It's pretty good for a singular slice of bacon. And it cooks up really well in the air fryer. Chocolate, got American cheese. Usually we like to get like the deli land lake, but this is good if you're like in a rush and there's a long line at the deli counter. Evie's favorite, her Mickey mac and cheese. Vans, waffles. The kids are back on their bagel kick in the morning and then just some gluten-free bread. All right, so getting into our meal baskets, this is amazing at Dollar Tree right now. These labels come, they come with like a bunch of papers, um, so they aren't dry erase like I want it, but if you're using something, you know, if you're labeling something simple like this, it's easy, plus you can always just go ahead and cut whatever paper to the right size. But originally I wanted to Cricut, you know, Monday through Friday and then just like a weekend label, but I just, didn't have any black vinyl left which was bizarre actually I had no like vinyl besides white so I need to get some more vinyl for my Cricut but anyway I'm just writing it out and what's so funny is that I was like wow this looks so terrible I was rushing before Carter's soccer game I was like, this looks like a baby did it and then Carter was like mom you did this by hand it looks so good so it's just so funny like what we think in our head versus like what our kids think and everything so I was going to redo these labels once I got vinyl in, but now I think I'll leave them because of that compliment from Carter. So what I did, because I don't want to have like a ton of meal baskets, I don't want seven. I feel like four is manageable. So what I did was I did um, like a double label on some, you'll see, so then when I can just turn it around and then have that day's label. I feel like that's more manageable and makes more sense. but. Honestly, having these is amazing. There's sometimes like when we're just gonna be doing like rice and like a protein in the air fryer and steam some vegetables that this won't make sense for and you can just omit that day or whatever. But for a lot of these recipes, it did make sense for me. So I'm gonna go through and show you what exactly I'm putting in. So the first thing I'm doing is getting the ingredients for chili. This is a great basket for that because it's a lot of pantry items. Like I said, like the tomatoes and the onion, the garlic, the kidney beans, even the chili powder because I'm not using chili powder until I make chili, right? So that was like a good one for these meal baskets. I also just have to tell you guys, I got a new mic. Well, Chris got me one. He's a sweetie. Um, and I literally look like an operator right now. I have this giant black headphones on with like that little like mouthpiece and I feel so ridiculous but I hope that it sounds better quality for you you know I gotta make up for my ice maker so on Tuesday we are trying that peanut chicken that I talked about and for this I printed out the recipe because I've never made it before and I think this is a great idea for the baskets too just again just simplifying it because in all honesty I think this took like 10 minutes to put these baskets together and in the long run it's going to save me so much time so for the roast all i have to put in there is the potatoes i could have actually added some onions and garlic in there as well and then this is my ingredients for the cacciatore i have capers sun-dried tomatoes and some white wine another one i could have added like onion and garlic to the bin as well so I know to some this may seem very extra, but just carving out this short amount of time will help you out for the rest of the week. Like, it's just something so simple. I do understand that not everybody has space for big bins like this, so even if you want to do what I used to do, it's just like get dinner ready during nap time or during like, I don't know, any type of downtime you have, you can go ahead and get your ingredients ready for the next meal. Um, so I hope that you really like this idea because when I did implement it before, it did just like save me so much. And again, it just keeps you, you know, saving money, cooking at home, which a lot of times is much healthier than eating out and just makes you use the things that you already have in your pantry.
So these make me really happy. Like $1.25 for a bin, $1.25 for a pack of three labels. You honestly just can't beat it and you're simplifying your life. You're just making it that much easier. Um, and I don't know, organizing and pretending that I have my life together makes me feel much better. So anyway, we talked about like some of the basic recipes, like having your veggie, your rice or, you know, whatever side you're having protein veggie side, you know, simple as that. So this is one of our favorite healthy go-to recipes, just doing some white rice in some chicken bone broth. And I'm making honey glazed salmon, which is always just like my favorite. I will link the recipe down below, but it's basically, you just put salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder on your salmon, and then you top it with a mixture of like soy sauce. I use liquid aminos and honey, and it comes out perfect every single time. It's delicious. And then this is hilarious. I don't have a vegetable steamer right now. I really need one. So this is how I'm steaming my vegetables. The top doesn't fit on, but it still does the job. If you get anything out of this video, I hope that you just get the confidence to cook at home more. And you know, I don't know, this, I feel like a lot of times when people see me like just trying to be as organized as I can and plan as much as I can, they think like, you know, that's perfectionism and things like that. But for me, my in my home, in my life, I could care less about perfectionism. It's literally my coping mechanism for anxiety and has been my entire life. So if I have things planned out and if my home is in order, I feel like I can take on whatever life throws my way. For example, like one of my kids getting sick or just like any stressor that may come, I feel like if I have my life together as much as I can at home, it just makes everything flow easier. I'm less stressed, which makes me a better wife and a better mom. And you guys know, I always tell you like how it is on my channel. There's weeks, like I said, that I didn't even get to touch my meal plan because life was crazy. But, you know, I just, I try my best. I don't like stress about it. I'm not like, oh my gosh, everything has to be organized all the time. But just trying my best, having systems in place, having routines, I feel like is super helpful. So here's just like a, such a crisp dinner recipe. So he was sweet enough. I was like, can you just record your recipe so we can show another simple one? And he was like, yes, I will. You know, I don't know why, but he just thinks that like filming himself cooking just feels silly to him, which is fine. I get it. Um, but anyway, same type of thing. But he's using the rice cooker. Does it make sense that I could be too lazy to use a rice cooker sometimes? I don't know if that makes sense or not. I'm just like, let me just use my regular old pot. I don't know. So we're just having rice again. This is like these are not back-to-back -back days um, and he is making some steak and then Brussels sprouts in the air fryer hear me out the shaved Brussels sprouts from Whole Foods are my favorite they're absolutely delicious and they're much more easier to eat like this if you get regular Brussels sprouts you can also just chop them thinly like this and Mike's hot honey you know it's like my favorite condiment it's so good you don't need a lot at all and it's like the perfect mixture of sweet, salty, with a little kick. So we basically season everything in this house with salt, pepper, and garlic, and that's what Chris is doing. I already know I'm going to get comments that he didn't use enough seasoning because people always want to tell me how much seasoning to use when I cook like anything basically, but we're the type of people that we like the way the food tastes with the seasoning, you know, not just like taste the seasoning with the side of meat. Like, you know, I don't know. Everybody has their own flavor, so let people season their food how they want to season their food. Um, and so in the air fryer, he has all that stuff on it, which was like the hot honey, salt, pepper, and just adding a little bit of avocado oil. When I was like editing this video, I was like, you cook our Brussels sprouts on 280 degrees. Like that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Cause I just always like do air fry on like the highest one that it is. Cause I like them very crispy and he's like in here perfecting them, like stirring them here and there. Um, but they were very delicious. So I guess whatever temperature you like. And then we're just using like our ninja grill for indoor normally if it was like summer we'd be grilling outside um but yeah 
these were delicious steaks and Chris just, you know, he made some jalapenos to go with it, which just gave it a little kick. He and Carter really like jalapenos. And just know if Chris is cooking, there's gonna be a healthy amount of butter in our food. He, sometimes he'll be like, I think he's all in like one of my morning routines, he'll be like buttering the kids' waffles and I'm like, all right, calm down there. Like that's enough. Cause like I make the kids' waffles, which is like a little bit of butter and they're still perfectly happy with it. He like saturates it. But anyway, that's the difference between mommy cooking and daddy cooking, but he is an amazing cook. Always has been one of the first things he ever made me when we first started dating was egg in a hole and he also made me like not together but you know um like a chocolate Hershey's milkshake and I always tell him that's why I fell in love with him that was basically just to show you you know some examples of just having your protein your veggie and your side um but I pulled some footage from some of my old videos to show you my staple recipes this is my chili recipe that I always make and I just use an entire yellow onion and the first thing I do is chop that up and then I'm going to saute that usually with like a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of butter. Here I'm using olive oil. Wow, look how long my hair was there. I just got it cut so I feel like it's so short now. Um, so I basically just cook that in the pan until it's translucent. Add my, I usually use a ground turkey for my chili. You can use whatever type of meat that you like. So instead of telling you every single thing, I wrote the recipe on screen there in my previous video that this was in. Um, I feel like this might have been like a get it all done video. I don't remember. So the recipe is on there for you to screenshot. Also, if you want my chicken marsala recipe, I put it in my last video and I also put it on screen for you to be able to screenshot as well. But I love this because you just cook it in the morning, throw it in the crock pot and it's perfect. It makes the house smell delicious and dinner is done. But also I always make cornbread with it um, or corn muffins and there's this brand Krusty's that I love and it's gluten free honey cornbread. Here is another older video of mine where I show how I make like a batch of tacos and of course you can just make tacos and you know have your kid make them individually or make them for your kid but for us it's so much easier if I just pre-make all of the tacos so basically I put them in that pan and they all stand up I add the taco meat add the cheese and let that bake in the oven for a little bit until the cheese is nice and melty and then you can put whatever type of toppings you want on it like lettuce etc so a lot of times when we do taco night, I'll also just like cut up some avocado, you know, and we always like to have fresh fruit with our dinner too, um, just because the kids really love it. Um, but we like to make nachos. So a super simple way is to just put a piece of paper down on the baking sheet, not a piece of paper, piece of parchment paper down on the baking sheet, add your chips, add your meat, top with cheese. I do cheese and black beans and you can do some salsa and that's just like another thing that all the kids love this video was like gut-wrenching because when i downloaded it and like used this portion i saw like ebby was still in her walker and just the kids look so much smaller it's just so crazy how fast they grow so once i have like all the meat and cheese and stuff on the um, nachos i just bake that for a little bit you see i baked these just until the cheese was melted look how small they were oh my goodness my heart can't even handle it um, but anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed this video and that it gave you some ideas and helped in some way. Um, again, just thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you on Wednesday with a get it all done. We are organizing and decluttering so much and it already feels so good. And I know it'll motivate you to get your homes done as well.
soul I 